Hey guys, it's Ecosi Termer again and welcome back to my channel. So in today's MRTK video, I'm going to introduce you to tooltips. I'm going to show you how you can set up a spline tooltip to basically describe different parts of the different 3D holograms that I'll have in the screen. One of them is going to be the Earth, the other one is going to be the Mars rover. I want to show you two different configurations and also show you how to set up an app bar so that we can designate where we're going to be seeing the bound configuration versus where we're not gonna see it. So if you wanna toggle it on and off, you can do that. Let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that we're gonna be focusing on today, it's going to be how to implement the tooltips that you see here. They are designating and explaining what each part of the earth in this case. And also on the right hand side, you're gonna see that the rubber also have tooltips with splines, but they behave a little bit different. Like where this one, the splines are following the, the rubber. I can rotate it and if I rotate, you know, everything gets adjusted, but the tooltips stay in place. Where this one, you know, everything follows it. I'm also gonna show you how to implement the app bar. So if I were to, you know, go into adjust mode, you can see that now I get the handle. So if I wanted to resize this and actually move it, you're gonna see that everything moves with it. So if I were to, let's go ahead and resize it. You're gonna see that even the tooltips are getting resized. And that is because of the hierarchy of how I set up this object versus how I set up this object. So what I'm gonna be doing today is gonna be, okay, going through that process. So before we keep going, I'm going to start from scratch. So I wanna just show you the process. I'm gonna be removing the rubber and the earth. I already added prefabs in here that you guys can use. I'm gonna be checking this into source control so you guys, you guys can test it. And make sure you watch my previous video because I go through some of the components that are in these objects such as the bound controls and object manipulator. The same thing on, on the rubber. If I go into this one, that's why these components are added. So make sure you watch that video before you continue with this one. So now that we have that, how can we add the, the tooltips? And if you go into the MRTK toolbox, you're gonna see there's gonna be tooltips towards the bottom of this. There are a couple of different ones. The ones that I added were the spline ones. You can also use a busier tooltip if you wanted to use that or a simple line tool a simple line tooltip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using this plan. I think I think that one for me looks the best for what we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that one and then we're just gonna be focusing here on the on the scene view. And we're gonna be starting with the earth. So what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and put this one inside. We can go ahead and, and just unpack this prefab for now. We just, we'll just recreate everything. The actual prefab, I'll just go ahead and set it to 000 so that we are at the right location. And uh, the line is not gonna be rendered correctly until you, just, you move the tooltip. You're gonna see that as soon as you do that, everything is gonna adjust it. So what I'll do is I also want to change the size and you're gonna have a lot of different options in here, including the text. And just like every other line in Unity, this uses a line render, but they're using a mixed reality line render, which is basically just an inherent object of the line render, which additional properties. I'm not gonna be covering every, link, every little thing in here because otherwise this video is gonna take forever. But what I'll do here is I wanna change the size. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and then remove the, the actual key keys that we have in there. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm looking to make it about, I think something like that works. I'm just looking at how it looks on the same view. And you can see that the, that is size a little bit smaller than what we had. Okay, so now that we have that, there's gonna be, you, you can either move the anchor, so if I wanted to move the anchor, I could do that manually. And I mean, you can do that, but there's also another way that I prefer doing it, and that is by adding a different object that, that can be basically tracking. We can say, okay, this is gonna be the target object here. The line is going to target that object. So the way that I did that is, if you go into prefabs, there's also a target indicator, and that's what I'm gonna be adding in here. That way I can adjust where this is gonna be located. So I know that on the cross and on the inner core, I'm gonna have basically the position of that object to determine the pivot of the line render. So I'm gonna put one right here. This is gonna be the first tool tip and then I'll just add a couple more. The other one is gonna be on the, on the outer, on the cross, which is gonna be right about here. It's gonna be the outer cross. And then the other one is going to be the earth outer core, which is gonna be around this area here. So what I'll do is I'll just move these right here and then we're just gonna be cloning this plane. Okay, so it's right about there. And then I can just go ahead and, you know, disable the, the well, the collider we can leave it, but the mesh render, I don't wanna see them. Or you can just also 
you know, unchecked uh, collider. In this case, I'm just using their position. And then I'll just go ahead and clone these a couple of times and then just move it all the way up. So this one is gonna be the inner core. So we're just gonna go ahead and target that object. I'll just go ahead and drag it and drop it to the tooltip connect connector. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that now it's gonna be, you know, attached to the inner core. And I like to rotate the view that way we can basically position it correctly until I'm kind of happy with where I position it and just put a thing right about there is fine. So it's gonna be the first one, right? I'll just put those two together. Then the next one is going to be the, we can just do the cross in here. I'll just put, I think that's the one that I did there, yep. I'll just grab this object and then grab the target indicator, drop it into the tooltip connect connector, and now this should be assigned, you know, correctly. And then the last one is going to be our outer, outer core. So what I'll do on that one, I'll do the same thing. I'll just grab this one. And obviously we can give these better names. I'll just move this one, perhaps something like that. So that it looks, it looks kind of cool. We can probably just move it down. The, the other thing that I don't like is the position of the line where it's actually placed. So you can change the, where you want to place the line. So if I go here, you're going to see that there's different options. One of them is the closest. Uh, you can do bottom middle. I think the bottom middle is the one that I like. So I think I can just go ahead and do it on all of them. And I can do multiple selection. It won't let me. So we just do each one of them. You're gonna see how that one adjusts it. We'll do the same one, the same thing on this one, and also the same thing on this one. And then not until you move this is where the line is going to be repositioned. And then this one, we can probably just move it so that we can get a little bit of a curvature maybe move it up front. Okay, so now that we have those, I can, I'm just gonna remove the word clone. And obviously you can rename these however you like them, just so that it makes sense in your project. I just don't like to see the, the those numbers. And then I'll just rename this one as well here. And then the target indicator on, on this one as well. Perfect, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and change the text. So this one is gonna be the inner core, so we can just say Earth inner core. I'll just copy that text. This one is going to be the outer crust. So we can just say it's going to be the, or actually the earth crust. Uh, we can say, yeah, we can say that. And then on this one, it'll just be the outer, outer core. And you can see that this one is kind of wrapping. So there's other options in here that you can also change. So what I'll do on the content size, I think we can change the, this is going to be one, I'm gonna make the font size to be about 25, it's fine. Now let's do 25. And then I'll do the same thing on this one, I'll just do 25. And then on this one, I'll just do one. And I think I'm just gonna do 1.5. 1.5 looks better. So I don't want it to be too small that it's gonna be hard to see. And then I'll just do 25 and there we go. And then we can just adjust a little bit so the, the line is is correctly rendering, just for the initial the initial view. And then I'll just do the same thing, the same thing on that one. So I think that works. If I go into the game view, you're gonna see that those ones uh, are now assigned to the correct parts. So what I can do now is if we go into game view and I were to hit play, you're gonna see that now it should be able to change the position of this and it's gonna follow. And as I move the earth around, there are components on this uh, tooltip that are going to follow the, the character, which in my case is me or the person, uh, however you want to call it, because that's basically facing, you know, facing the, the person that is actually interacting with it. And I think this has a couple of constraints and somewhere in here there, there might be constraints. But anyways, that, that's how those ones behave. So what I'm gonna do is, what, well, the, the other question is you might say, okay, why are these ones following the earth? And on the initial demo, this one wasn't. And the reason for that is because of the hierarchy, right? Like if you need to, if you want everything to follow the earth in this case or, or your object, that's because the object that I am manipulating with the object manipulator is the main object. So if I were to move this, everything is gonna move, right? Because it's all using the hierarchy. And let me go ahead and save that. So that's how that works. It's just the hierarchy plays an important role where on this one, I'm not gonna be moving this object, which is gonna be the main object. I'm gonna be moving the Mars Curiosity rubber, and that's why the splines are gonna be set up in this level. And the splines are not going to be following the entire main object, they're going to be following just this object. 
So that's what I'm going to do next. Let's go ahead and set those up. I'm just going to resize this a little bit. And then what I'll do, I'm just going to clone this one just to just for simplicity's sake. And then we can go ahead and just resize the, actually change the X, Y, and Z. And then I'll do the same thing on the spline. Let's go ahead and change X, Y, and Z. And you can see that as soon as we do that, this is there's kind of like, like a line going into the rubber. So we'll go ahead and change here to scene view. And then on this object, I'm just going to move it perhaps to right here. And what I wanted to do on this one, I wanted to kind of designate this, this was going to be the main engine. Or, you know, if this was a sensor or a specific part, maybe a tire, then, you know, you can describe what that is. I'm just going to say this is going to be the rubber. You can just say rubber main engine, just for simplicity's sake. And you can also change the size here of the phone if you don't want that to wrap. I think I'm just going to leave it as that. I think that, that's fine. I'll just move it a little bit. There we go. And then I'll just add another one here. I'll just clone that one. This one is going to be for the, I think I did the camera before. So we'll just, we'll just do the camera. And I'll just move this one perhaps. Let's grab that one. And for some reason, you can't use the arrows. You have to just hit the sphere. We'll just do the same thing. We'll just hit the sphere. And maybe I'll just put this one right about here. And I think I'll just put that one on the back so that we can have a space for sh this one showing. And then what I'll do here on the camera, I'll just go ahead and move it up. And remember, we need to move the target indicator. So I'm just going to enable the mesh render. Go here. We can zoom in, make sure that we got, and if you press V on your keyboard, it's going to snap to the mesh. That's what I did before, just to make sure that everything was positioned correctly. And then I'll just zoom in and something like that works. And then I'll just move this. Let me undo that and move it up. There we go. And then I'll just change this one. It's going to be the, the camera. I'll just call it the HD camera. And then if we go back into game view, you can kind of see how that's looking. And I'll just zoom out and I'll just readjust it. There we go. So that gives you gives you an idea. Obviously, you can you know you can tweak this until you know it looks it looks good to you. But that's how that works. So if we go back into the game view, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and then hit play. You're gonna see that when we move this object, it's not going to, it's gonna behave different than this one. So I can move this object, right? Everything attaches to the earth. Where on this one, if I go back a little bit, you're gonna see that now this is moving, but wait, we have an issue, right? The the target are not moving with the so it doesn't actually work. And I made that on mistake, um, you know, I, I did that on purpose. And the reason for that is because these are following this object. Well, you're moving this object, so you need to move the target indicators inside the Mars Curiosity rubber because this is the one that is getting moved. So now if we go back into the game view and we were to hit play, you're going to see that now things should be behaving the way that they should be behaving. So if you move around, you can see that the, the splines are now following the rubber. I can also resize it. These are not going to resize because of the hierarchy. But if I go on this one, you know, these are obviously getting resized and everything is working as it should. So that's how you set up those splines. And if you want to, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to use different types, you can use a Bezier, you can use a simple line, or you can use the splines, which are the ones that I am currently using. The other thing that I wanted to show you too is I wanted to not always show, in this case, when I, when I hover, we're showing the bound controls. Well, I want to make that optional. And there's another component that I wanted to introduce you to. If you go to Mixed Reality Toolkit Foundation, SDK, Features, UX, Prefabs, there's actually something called the App Bar. And the way that that works is we're going to be placing that inside the Earth. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it here. And as soon as you do that, it's going to give you an App Bar script and it's going to associate everything automatically for you except the bounding box. So in this case, the bounding box is on the parent object, which is the Earth. So what we need to do is just drag it and drop it. And it gives you different options if you wanted to display, you know, a standalone display type, which I haven't really tried what that means when I change it. But I'm just going to leave it at that and I'll show you what it does as, as, as it is right now. But if you want to allow, remove, adjust, or hide, you can toggle them here and also different icons that are available and also some of the, the properties depending on how you want that to behave. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and Play and it's actually pretty neat how easy it was to 
to get it out of it. So you can see on this one, you know, this one is showing the bound controls automatically. This one is not showing me the bound controls anymore. So by adding the app bar, it's taking care of, okay, now I only want to do it when I, when I tell it to do. So if I get close a little bit here, you can see that we have an adjust button, we have a remove button, and we also have a hide. So if I wanted to hide it, I can, you know, select it and it's going to hide it. I can show the menu. And this is the basic functionality that you see on the holo, on the HoloLens operating system. So if I go into adjust, you're going to see that now we get our bound control, so I can adjust it. But if I'm done, I don't want to show those. And, and then I, I like this US, UX implementation. I think it's cleaner. And if I wanted to hide it, you can also, you know, do remove and then, you know, it doesn't show you that anymore. But this basically wraps up what I wanted to show you today. So we went over, you know, creating tool tips, assigning, you know, the target objects on some of those tool tips, and also how to set up the the other the app bar on the, the no, that is attached to the bound control. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. If you guys have any questions about this or additional questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.